how to spend a perfect day on Elon Harris, all the things that you need to know, how much does it cost and is it worth it and more coming up. I love Mexico! Your girl is gonna be breaking down this video by giving you an island overview as well as sharing with you the top things to do on the island. As well as should you stay on the island or should you just visit for a day and how do you even get on the island and how much does it cost and is it even worth it? And if you're new here, hola. I'm Christine with Where in the World is CL and I make travel videos every week to help you get up, get out and go travel. So if you like to travel, consider subscribing. I try so hard to do a ton of research to be a smart traveler. And in these videos, I try really hard to make the video I wish I got to see before I traveled to a place. So I'm going to be sharing with you all of my top tips for Ilu Meharis and make sure you check the description below for tons of helpful resources, links and information. Let's dive in. Let's start with an overview. Ilu Meharis stands for the Island of Women and it's small. It's only four miles long and around 12,000 people live here. There are three main ways of seeing the island. The first way is to take the ferry over from Cancun and rent a golf cart. The second way is to take the ferry over and get on a boat that takes you on a tour around the island. The third way is to actually stay on the island and spend more time there. I'm hoping that by sharing some of the top things to do on the island, you'll get a gist of what makes sense for you, but I'll also give you some tips at the end to share with you some ways to think about how you might want to plan your own trip. Let's start with things to do, and I started with the number one thing to do. We're going to Playa Norte, which is supposed to be the destination to go to on this island, and I'm excited to scope out what this might be like. Here's a helpful tip. It only takes nine minutes to walk to Playa Norte from the main area that all the ferries drop off from. So I was feeling pressure to get the golf cart right away, but I'm glad I didn't. So more on that in a sec. One of the things I love the most about this area, both Cancun and Isla Mujeres, is the color of the water. It really is so beautiful here. With or without the polarized sunglasses. Looking for more of a relaxing, enjoying the beach time kind of day, I could totally imagine spending an entire day or days just chilling on this beach, doing some water sports maybe, jet skis, kayaks, or just spend your time day drinking. We are at Tarzan right now, right on the beach. Best place to grab a drink. I have no idea how much this costs. Let's find out what it is. It ended up being just 120 pesos or $6 for a glass of wine. And I want to share this because here is the original problem I had. So we're really hoping to just rent some chairs and grab some drinks so we can get in this beautiful water. And the pricing is very interesting. Here are two examples of prices in case this helps you out. The first one, the place we went to was offering 300 pesos or around $15 for an entire day of two chairs and an umbrella. Awesome if you're going to be there the whole day. The second place was a 400 peso spend per person. In other words, $20 towards food and drinks, and then you could sit at the chairs and umbrellas. For us, we just wanted to go in the water real quick, so Tarzan worked out really well for us just getting a drink and popping in the water. I like that spot. Why were we in such a rush to get out of there? Because one thing you've got to do is rent a golf cart. They see me rolling. All right, here's some helpful tips to know about renting a golf cart on this island. I went to Ciro's golf cart rentals, which was right next to Playa Norte, and they had the regular golf carts and the big ones. And the regular one was just $15 for the hour, $45 for the whole day. I've seen people get other prices at other places, so do your homework, but that's what I paid. And because we were short on time, we did it for just one hour. And that $15 included everything, included gas, and there were no extra fees. It's more rapido, see? Yes. Mucho rapido. Fuerte. Oh, lo mismo del Ferrari. It was literally too easy to rent a golf cart. You do need to show your driver's license as you're filling out the paperwork and they will hold on to it until you bring the golf cart back in one piece that is. So the next question to ask is, well, where do you go? That looks like a good stop if you had the time, but it takes about an hour to get around the entire island. This brewery has such good reviews on TripAdvisor, but if I had more time, what I would actually do is I would go all the way south to Punta Sur, which by the way, if you're getting some value out of this video or having some fun with me, cheers that like button and consider subscribing and make sure you check the show notes in the description below for more helpful resources. And tell me in the comments when you're going to Ilan Mujeres, I'd love to know. 
All right, Punta Sur, here's what you gotta know. Once you make your way down there, you can expect to see things like a few Mayan ruins down there, and it's only $3 to get in, but it's a really cool walking path where you can walk around and kind of see the sights. And I think just about everyone that goes there sees pretty amazing wildlife, whether it's dolphins jumping or something, but definitely a place to stop at if you have the time. Ooh, one of my other favorite ways to visit this island is doing one of the things I love the most, which is getting on a boat. And when I was in Cancun, I talked to a few different tour operators, so I want to share with you what I found in case this helps you. Generally, all the tours were exactly the same, where it's 10 a.m. to 5 p.m., an all-day thing, in which you're taking the ferry over and then you're jumping on one of these boats. And they stop at three different places where you can go and you can snorkel, go to a beach club, and just hang out. And so that's what a boat tour normally looks like. And I was really interested in this because I did really want to see the underwater statues, but one of the things that made me not want to do this is because, well, two reasons. One is because I was just recently on Ila Holbosch. Tons of videos on that in description below, but also because I really felt like these might be a little bit too crowded and touristed, and I didn't feel like I wanted to be herded around with a lot of tourists. I wanted to create my own experience, but I still wanted to know the price. And so when I was negotiating with these guys, the starting price was at $75, which I think is totally reasonable for an entire day of boating around. So $75 per person. After, you know, a little bit of negotiation, I was able to get it down to $55 per person, which feels like a steal, but hopefully that helps you gauge if this might be something you wanna do and a general price of what you can expect to pay. And sometimes whether you don't wanna spend time negotiating or you want to know what you're doing in advance, the other way I love to do these things is looking via Viator or other tour websites. So check the description below for some of the highest reviewed ones that I found and was considering. Cause boating is so fun. But I really wanted to try the golf cart. It's fun exploring on your own and going wherever you want. It's nice. So let's talk about where I went on the golf cart and some other things that I considered. One thing that was definitely apparent about Elam Harris versus Holbosch, and I do have a video on that, link in the description below, is there's definitely more touristy activities to do. So on Elam Harris, you'll find things like the Dolphin Discovery or Kinha or the Tortu Granha, which are the larger tourist attractions in case things like that might interest you. But given I was very limited on time, I just did a little bit of sightseeing. Golf cart is parked. Scenic stop number one, this place right here. Let's go see if we can find some views. This spot is highly rated and reviewed on TripAdvisor and is a great place to just see a beautiful chapel right on the water and grab a few photos with great views. Another thing to do is just eat, drink, and chill. There are so many cool restaurants in the main part of town with really cool vibes. Stacy, who I was hanging out with on this day, even went to the ice bar, which looks like a really great idea if it's really hot outside. But I was hangry, and TripAdvisor told me that this spot was well-reviewed. things I saw on just about every menu in Cancun and here is the special guacamole of the day, which happened to have crickets on it. And I'm like all about trying new things. And then you can see that we were really good. Oh, uh, awesome restaurant, you gotta come here. Tell me if you feel me on this, but I'm always looking for travel videos that tell me the price. Like, what did you pay? So for lunch, we had each an appetizer, a drink, and a main dish, and it came out to $35 each with tip and tax. <clears throat> okay, that was a lot. Let's recap all of the things that there are to do, all right? Let's start with Playa Norte. Tons of water sports, that's on the north side. Get on a boat, hang out at the beach. Rent a golf cart and drive around the island. We know it takes about an hour to go around it. And don't forget to hit Punta Sur and walk around on that path. Hopefully see some magical dolphins, etc. And maybe check out that viewpoint and maybe the brewery and some other scenic spots. Get on a boat and do a tour around the entire island. Check out some of those tourist attractions or just have the happiest hour and cruise around to all the amazing restaurants in the Playa Norte area and just have a lot of drinks. Let's talk about how much time you should spend on the island because 
it's apparent that I ran out of time while I was there. The first thing you're probably wondering is should you stay on the island? If you have the time, I would actually do it. I would have stayed on Elon Mujeres and I looked up some hotel info for you, so let's talk about that in a sec. But the only reason why I didn't is because I already got in my island time in Holbosch. So make sure you check the info in the description below for that, but let's talk about some hotels. In case it helps, I wanna quickly show you my pro tips on how I look at hotels to get a gist for what there is. Does it even seem worth it? Does it seem nice? And for the price that it is, does it fit within my budget? For whatever my budget happens to be on that trip. And let's start with Agoda. So the way I do this one is I like to look at the higher rated hotels and I like to sort it at three stars and up so I can just get a gist of like what the range is but this isn't showing me like where things are located on the map but then I love to jump over to Google Maps and and I would want to stay in Playa Norte because I would want that vibe and be around the different bars restaurants beach clubs etc now I'm sorting it by top rated and I'm seeing what's around and it's giving me more options around like what's in the area I'm looking for and getting an understanding of those prices so see the notes in the description below as well as a video of how I quickly plan a lot of my travel because but now you have a sense of approximately what the range is for decent hotels on Ilo Mujeres. And tell me in the comments below how you're planning your trip or which one you would consider. Would you do the day trip like I did or would you stay overnight? If I could redo my trip, if I had more time and I didn't go to Ila Holbosch, I would do two nights on the island. I would definitely get a private boat. I would definitely get the golf cart and I would definitely snorkel or scuba dive. Otherwise, as a day trip, Ah, oh, I had such a good time. I loved my trip over there. And getting there is also super easy. Taking the Ultramar Ferry. Here's what you need to know about getting from Cancun to Ila Mujeres. So this is actually helpful to know. The ferry ride over there is only like 20 minutes long. There are four places in Cancun with three of them being in the main hotel zone for places to grab the ferry over to Ila Mujeres. And I highly recommend looking at their schedule on the Ultramar Ferry website. I put a link for you in the description below. For me, I was super limited with only one time left to get over there and only one ferry going back. And so it would have been really helpful in my planning had I known what the schedule was in advance. One helpful tip is that when you're in here, it's cash only. Which at $26 per person for a round trip ticket isn't that bad unless you have two friends that don't have enough pesos and need to spot them with the very few pesos you have. We got round trip tickets and we're now we're waiting for the ferry and uh, it's kind of choppy out here. I'm curious how that's going to go down. The reason why I was wondering this is because I was trying to take the Ultramar Ferry when I was in Playa del Carmen just a few months back. And because it was so choppy, no boats were going to Cozumel and I never made it to the island. I was super stoked though. It was very mellow on the ride and it was just so beautiful. And you have options to sit upstairs and enjoy the view or enjoy the air conditioning and take it downstairs. The Ooh, pro tip on the way back to Cancun, sit upstairs, especially if the weather's nice, because they have live music up there. They serve cervezas and waters, etc. It costs just as much for a beer as it does for a water at three dollars, but totally worth it. And don't forget to bring gratuity for the musician. Water and beer, same price. Okay, so how much did the whole thing cost and was it worth it? Let's recap how much it cost. Getting there, round trip ferry ticket, $26. My drinks at Playa Norte, wine, just $6. That golf cart was $15 for an hour. My lunch with drinks, that includes the 15% tip that I gave plus tax, was $35. My ferry ride back for the water and the $2 tip for the musician brings me to $5 for a total, grand total for the day of $87. Was it worth it? Heck yeah, it was worth it. I spent $87 and about 2.5 seconds in the Cancun nightlife scene, which more videos on that in the description below if you wanna see that. Ilu Harris was so much fun. If you had fun with me in this video, cheers that like button if you haven't already. I'm Christine, I'm here every week with new videos. Check that description for more helpful info and I'll see ya in the next adventure. Ciao.